gonna back it in. Ford Ranchero right behind me. I'm going to show you the car and get to know the story behind this. Greg's built it himself. He's restored it. So that's pretty cool. And I always want to know the story behind the restoration processes, as you all know. Um, interesting fact about Greg is his son, Zach, has got a channel as well. And he does, um, the channel is Wide Customs. So he shows you how to restore your cars, how to um, fix stuff and basically bring it back to life. So if you are looking at something and you're stuck, then head over to Wide Customs, check out Zach's videos, and um, maybe your problem will be solved. But for now, Greg, how are you going? Good. Okay, so tell us about your Ranchero. Uh, it's a 1967 Ford Ranchero. Mm -hmm. um, I've had it for probably 10 years. Uh, started out, my son and I were building it, and uh, then he joined the military and moved away, so I kind of finished it. but. Uh, yeah, it's been modified from the uh, front bumper all the way to the back. Okay. And um, 
bumpers pulled in, tucked, narrowed, all the bolts removed, front headlights were molded in, grill's been changed, um, extensive work on the hood, if you'd like to see it. Ooh, that's nice. Beautiful. Now, now that the sun is on it, I'm seeing that color and it's a very different color. Um, the color is called magma red. It looks black in some directions and then changes to a root beer color. Root beer, yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. It's not it's not so much bronze, but it's definitely got red in it. And I do love the hood. I like what you've done here. Now I'm not, I don't know too much about why things get put on <laughs> cars and especially hoods. So you've got the air here, these two that, sides. That kind of lets the air out. It's, some people call them heat exchangers. Heat exchangers, okay. Allows the pressure to be relieved from under the hood so the air can flow through it a little better. Well, how much pressure is under the hood is the real question. Well, I don't know that. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> What's the engine? What motor do you have? It has a 302 out of a Mustang. Out of a Mustang, nice. Nice. It's been built up a little bit, has uh, larger valves and aluminum heads and mm -hmm. intake cam, just the normal stuff we do. And when you picked it up, how, what was the condition like 10 years ago? It was pretty rough. Uh, I had to build a lot of the panels on the, the lower quarters were eight away as usual. Mm -hmm. Rusting, yeah. And uh, other than that, just a normal build really. Okay. What's left here from 10 years ago that you haven't touched? Which piece hasn't been touched? Yeah. All the, all the panels have been modified in some way. The bumpers, like I said, the headlights are, are molded. It used to have a, a mold around them. I put a flush windshield mount so it doesn't have chrome around the windshield anymore. It looks more sleek. Yeah. yeah. Door handles are removed from the doors. Now, is this another button door? Opens up with a button. Yeah, I got a, a remote for it. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those today. Beautiful. Love what you've done with the interior. Thank you. Very nice. Bed's and been all smoothed out. Yeah. Filler neck's been removed and put into the tailgate on the inside of the fender. Okay. Tail lights are molded, handmade tail lights. Handmade. The bumper is completely modified in the back. I can see, um, I like the groove it's got. It's got the two the I added steps. the spoiler, that's not stock, that's uh, all handmade. Very nice. Very nice spoiler. Just the perfect height for it. Now you were lucky, Greg, because you said that um, your son started this. So he got you into restoration or you got him? No, I got him into it. Yeah. We've been doing hot rods for years. My uncle's got me into hot rodding. And so all my brothers and I, we just modify cars and That's have great. fun with them. That's great. Yeah. That's absolutely great. And you've done other cars besides this? I've had a few different cars through the years, yes. With the 301 engine, what's the horsepower on it? What was it? Uh, horsepower, uh, somewhere around uh, 400, 450. Nice. Like Nice. And this is your driver? Yeah. How do you keep it looking so shiny and nice? Actually, it's kind of rough right now after the rain. I had to clean it off and... Uh, Doesn't look it. it. Yeah, it... Uh, I clean it quite a bit. Yeah, you got to stay on it. Yeah. Yeah. Can't build a car and love it if you're not going to be looking after it and cleaning it and maintaining it. Ah, oh, that's great. That's great, Greg. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Thank you.
Okay, so I'm here with Steve, who's got this beautiful Ford Fairmont. Fairmont. 67? 79. 79. 79 Ford Fairmont. I'm reading the sign backwards. <laughs> 79. Great. How long have you had it for? About 15 years. 15 years? You've had it for a while? Yeah. Okay. And did you restore it back yourself? Be your friends. If it weren't for my friends, it wouldn't be on the road. Nice. And how, um, what did you do to it? Because, I mean, it looks uh, really everything. good. Everything. It started life as a straight six column shift automatic. It's now V8 five speed full disc brakes. Nice. It was brown. It's now green. It's a lot more better color now, I must it's, say. It's called Highland Green. Highland Green. It's beautiful. And you've changed the engine? Yes. Beautiful. There's a lot going on there. Why have we got these on top? That's a handling brake. So the corners and stuff it stiffens the car up, makes it handle a little better. Okay. It will help it handle better. Is that because this motor would be very large for the body? No, just something I chose to do. Okay. Okay. I like handling. So very nice. And what's the horsepower? No idea. Okay. I'll say 300. Oh, well, it's a V8. V8. Yep, yep. Very nice. Why the Fairmonts? Something different. Because if you watch her channel, if you watch her videos today and look around, how many Camaros or Mustangs or whatever, I'm pretty sure this is going to be like the only Fairmont you see here today. You know what? That's pretty true because of all the interviews I've done, um, I've done heaps of Chevy pickups and I've done Corvettes. This is the first one. There are other odd cars here. This yeah. Is one of them. You know, I, I go to a lot of local shows or shows and nobody knows what it is because yeah. it's not something somebody will know what turn into hot rods. Yeah. Yeah. But you have. Yeah. But you have. You've upgraded it, you've modified it, and it's now a hot rod. I had to even look at the sticker myself because I had no idea what it was. You know, it doesn't have some big symbol or sign here. Nope. I have no emblems, I have nothing that says Ford, nothing that says Fairmont. No. It's good. It's like I said, I get a lot of, you know, is it a Monte Carlo or is it a this or that? Yep. Few people know right off the bat, but usually it's what is it? Yeah. yeah. It's, I, I can see that for sure. And you did the interiors as well? Yes. Let's have a look. Very nice. And how long do you think it took you and your It was friends? like five years to, to get it back on the road. I drove it for a year as it was. Okay, so it was drivable when you got right. it. Right, I got it for, yeah, I got it for $400. So. Nice. And then we got into it and I said over a period of time, like five years, friends, yep. stuff like that, get it painted and everything. So if somebody gets a an old car, a very old car, and they want to do it and take their time, what's one of the first things that you would recommend that they need to start with? What did you start with? Well, I started with a base fur line, but I already... No, 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 sorry. Excuse me. I uh, knew in my head what I yeah. wanted to do. So it also depends on... The restoration. What did you start with? Depends on what you're, how, you're, how you're wanting to go about it. Are you wanting to do some stuff and still be able to drive it while you're doing it? Or are you ready to just commit and say, I'm blowing it apart yep. and I'm going, you know... Like yep. I said, this went down to bare nothing. Wow. I mean, there's no interior, no nothing, no wire. Wow. It went down to bare shell yeah. and came back up. Okay. Some people may not want to go to that extent. Right. Okay, I'm going to leave the interior or whatever. I'm going to V8 it. I'm going to change this or that. Yeah. It all is all in what you want to do with the car. What do you want out of the car? Okay, so for yourself, you drive it for a year and then you just stop right. driving and it? Right, and I was like, okay, I got some help down. lined up. Okay, here's what we're doing. Yeah. You know, I have to change this to put the V8 in it. Yep. I got to do this to make it a five-speed. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing that you were able to do and make so much modifications to these right. cars because you can't do that with the modern cars. With what? With the modern cars. Oh yeah, you can. Some. You think you can do that with a Tesla? If you wanted to. You think so? Well, you could still modify it. You could yep. do 
different body things to it or interior. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't be harder or cost more to do. With the computers, with the computer technology. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. But yeah, these these cars are great. That's it's awesome. What, it's all in how deep the pockets are. That's true. They do cost. They do cost, which is why I'm you walking around. Enough, you got deep enough pockets, you can do whatever you want. Okay, all right. You know, there have been people that have taken Teslas and taken the electric out and put a V8 in them, I think, already. Have they? That's pretty cool. I said, how can people take other cars that weren't electric and made them electric by using some of the Tesla stuff or the other? Okay. I, had, I, I had gotta no have idea. that rumble. I want a V8. Yeah, car. I'm with you, mate. Me too. Me too. I could never drive an electric if my life depended on it. You need to have the. You, you need say to that until you drive one. I have I a don't. Drunk. I have. I've rode in a couple of them. Yeah. They get it. No. You they just don't have that rumble. No, I don't know. I just. I like these ones. Now, the good guys for how many years? Three to four. Three to four. Okay. My friend, the other Steve, got yeah. me started on it. Nice. And you like and it? Have a few years back, because a lot of times I would just hit local stuff. Yeah. And it was like, hey, I'm going to this one. It's this far away. And this and that. By the same token, with this particular car. Some shows I can go to, some shows I can't. Yes. Because there's year restrictions. Yep. This one has recently changed. It has recently so changed. So I'm now allowed. Okay. There's one later in the year we will go to in Ottawa, Kansas, that I can't go because it's a 72 and older. Okay. That's their rules. Yes. 79? No, you can't enter. No, no. It's like the F100 Ford shows. Right. That was I can't 64 show and older. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I can go to Ford shows. And I've been to some cool Mustang shows because they're still a Ford show. Yeah. So I can still get in. The classes may be rougher for me as far as, you know. But anymore, I go for Ford. I'm not, I'm, I like awards here and there, but I'm also getting to where I don't really care. I go for well, fun. Well, it's the fun. You're here with your friends, you're hanging right. out, and I mean, this is what the car culture is about, isn't it? Everybody here just having a good time. It's not really about the awards. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Steve. Sure thing. Appreciate it. This is nice. Oh, I do love yellow. This is not exactly yellow. It's musta mustard, but it's absolutely beautiful. 1970 Pontiac. And what was the exact model? Steve, how are you going? Good. It's a, a 1970 GTO yeah. uh, Judge convertible 455 car. It's called Orbit Orange for a paint color. That's what the paint color is, uh, okay. Orbit orange. And uh, it's got the judge stripes. Uh, they're reflective, so at night, if light, lights hit them, they reflect. Nice. Um, it's got the hood tack up, up there on the hood. It's got the ram air option, so. So we've got. The ram air, the scoops open up, take air in to the motor. Okay, beautiful. I did get your name right, right? Danny. 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 Can you blame Greg for that? Yes. Because he said, yep, that's Steve and that's Steve as well. Both those guys are Steve sitting on the bench. They're Steve's. Steve's. Danny. Steve Steve. I'm, Danny. I'm sorry. That's okay. My apologies. That's all right. <laughs> as I, was, I said, hold on a second. Where was he pointing when he pointed out the Steve's? Okay, Danny. I love it. Now, did you restore it yourself? No, no. I bought it uh, almost a year ago. It'll be a year uh, that I've had it in August. Okay. I pursued it for about three or four years from a friend of mine. You pursued it? Yes. Tell a friend us. of mine had it and he was iffy if he wanted to sell it. One one time he wanted to sell it, then he didn't, you know. Okay. And, and uh, so we just kept in touch and talking about it. You broke him. And uh, well, yep. <laughs> he found, I. he told me he, he wanted a 69 Trans Am convertible. Okay. And I knew somebody had taken a 69 Firebird and converted it to the 69 Trans Am because they only made eight of them in real oh, life. Wow. And so they would be real high dollar. But anyway, I found him one. He bought that car and I bought this car, so. You were really persistent. Yes. Now, what is it about this GTO that you made you pursue it so hard? No, it was just kind of one of my bucket list. It was okay. a dream car that I, I wanted. I yep. particularly love it, the color and, and uh, all that. And then, the shape, I, I mean, I, I love the shape of it, the way it just runs. And I was looking at it from the side as well. It's it's beautiful. I can see that. Got the, the 
wing on the back and that's where it tells the engine size on the side of the wing. We're gonna go there. Guilty. Guilty. If you're gonna have a judge, it's guilty. Guilty. <laughs> I love it because it's the judge, of course. Guilty. Alright, so we've got 455. 455 high output, yes. Very nice. And it's got, that's the stock exhaust. That's the way it would have looked. That's the way it would have the exhaust would have looked. Yep, okay. That's how it's how it's born. Uh, this has the VOE exhaust on it, vacuum operated exhaust, and you pull a knob on the under the dash, you can look in a minute, and it opens up the muffler so it gets a little louder, a little deeper. Oh, nice. So, this well, car we're gonna, also... We're going to listen to that in a second, aren't we? Okay, <laughs> and this car also has the factory 8-track player. So, down there, under the dash. Right there. Yes. See the ram air knob and the other yep. knob for the exhaust. Oh, that's awesome! You really made this into a hot rod. Yep. Do you want to hear the exhaust? I do. Of course, we all want to hear the exhaust. Okay. <laughs> Check under the hood before oh, yeah. I let you go. Yeah. <laughs> I love the front here. Do what? The shape of the front here. You like that? Yeah. It's called an Endura front bumper. The Endura front. It doesn't have, you know, a regular front bumper. It was uh, new on the GTOs. Right. I haven't seen him too much. Just so you know about the VOE exhaust, yeah. if anybody goes online and looks at uh, VOE commercial, during uh, the Super Bowl in 1970, they run a commercial one time. There was a silver GTO, they yep. called it the Humbler, and he drives through a car hop with Chevelles and Cudas and Mustangs, and he pulls that knob that I pulled, and yep. it got a little deeper, and he started revving it up. Yeah. And the story is, is that, uh, that commercial was one time. GM Brass saw that commercial and said, we're not promoting street racing and told Pontiac to pull that option and to pull that commercial. So it was only on TV one time. Wow. And only about 205 cars got that option. And you found out about it and you you didn't, didn't leave your mind. No. The commercial did its job. It's a neat option. <laughs> now this is neat. This is neat. I love what's happening here. What is happening here? 455 cubic inches right there. Yeah. This is the ram air. That's so the ram throws, air. It throws air in, yeah. in the scoops and then brings it right down in here so it gets cold air. To cool it. To cool the, you know, right into the intake. So. Wow. You've got a lot of room here. I understand that's a big engine. Yeah, if it had air conditioning, you'd have... It would take up you more know, space. Yeah, you'd have a... a the... Uh, do right here so you'd have air conditioning and stuff going down this side somewhat oh so you still got the battery here okay yes. yep oh that's great but the compressor would be right there and you know so it's a non-air car beautiful beautiful and how long did you say it took you to well restore it? i didn't restore it I, Your friend? I bought it from my friend and i think this car was brought back in 95 so i don't think he even restored it it was before that he bought it this way and then I bought it from him this way and so it's just been well taken care of and it's fun to drive. Yeah, well it's definitely, it would definitely be fun to drive. Like and you, you'd either have to put your hair up or you yeah. just have to say the heck with it because when you're driving a convertible it's going to go everywhere. <laughs> that's true. So. Yeah, well that's the problem with girls. If you've got your hair down, you're sitting in a convertible unless you've got a hat or you put a little 50 scarf on your head, the hair is just right on your face. Yep. Yeah. Now, with the uh, top cover here, is that mechanical? Yes, the, the top is. 
uh, electric. It doesn't have the electric. Oh, it's electric. So, okay. Yeah, so it's got a button right there. It says up, up yep. and down. And so what you do is you, you peel this off. Yep. And then you can move it to the inside and then the top comes up. And is it black? Yes. The nice. Top is black. Very nice. We had a little rain earlier, so I had to have the top up. But as soon as I could, I wiped it down and put it back down. Convertibles need to have the top down every chance you get. Hundred percent, especially ones that didn't have it. I saw them running around trying to put plastic covers. So. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, nice spoiler, by the way. I didn't notice that before. That was part of the judge option. I think it was like a. I want to say a three hundred twenty-three dollar option. You got things like the stripes, the you know this. It has a front spoiler down below. It, you've really kept this well and even your friend before you because oh yeah it's it's been kept really well and those are the actual 14 inch rims that it would have had on it uh so in other words those are the originals original rims those aren't the original tires but they're no exactly, I, I didn't think they would be they're original exactly tires. remakes of the original tires it would have had the wired oval fire stones on it just like right. that that's what it would look like right beautiful so it's it's basically right back to what it what it was born with that's great. And how long have you been bringing it to the good guys? Well, this is its first trip. I've nice. had, the, had the car, it'll be a year in, in August, so I haven't okay. quite had it a year. Last year I brought a, another car, so this is its first trip up here. Yep. And what car did you bring last year? I uh, bought uh, my first new car, an 87 IROC Z28 with T-tops and nice. all the options. It's a dark red metallic and it's it's a beautiful car. I've, I've taken good care of it. So. Yeah, but now it's got competition. Yeah, and I actually have uh, two Mercury's as well that are being, uh, one's being restored somewhat, and the other one is getting ready to go to uh, Talents for uh, Resto Mod. Okay. So I got a Boss 521 going to go in it. It's, uh, one of them's a 1970 Mercury Cyclone Spoiler. Yep. One of 1,631 and 429 Cobra Jet 4 Speed. And the other one is a 1970 Mercury Cyclone GT, and that's going to get a Boss 521 in it. So the man likes his American cars. You betcha! You <laughs> betcha! This is great. I wouldn't have it any other way. Good for you. Good for you. I mean, it's awesome. You know, the passion shows. He's even got his shirt, the Judge. Oh yeah. Yep. Gotta have it. Oh, that's great, Danny. Thank you so, so much, man. So everybody's guilty. Oh, you gotta do it with my guilty. flight. That's uh, it. Flight front and back. That's it. I can't believe that was even available for you to get that. Yeah. Guilty. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, mate. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. You enjoy that. I know you do. Thank you. Okay, Steve, come and tell me. What have you got here? Well, this is a 1969 Buick Skylark Custom Convertible. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Buick Convertible Custom. 69 hey yes how long you've had it for i've had it since 1992 you've had it for a long time i have so you've done a lot of the restorations yourself i've done it i've done a lot i mean it was painted and kind of looked this way when i got it okay i ended up well i put the hood on it it had a standard view it could i added the grand sport hood i like the and, the grills and, on the hood uh, yeah the, the other hood actually was just a flat hood with a big piece of chrome down it and I Buick like style yeah Buick style yep. so I added that hood and then I redid the grill made the custom insert for the grill um, the custom interior I built the motor and did all the you know, the work you built the motor. the motor well I had it built I installed it and okay the car actually acquired its name of its I call it Eleanor because when we were building it it was kind of when Gone in 60 Seconds came out Yep. And they couldn't steal Eleanor. Yeah. Well, this one wouldn't run. We kept taking the motor in and out because it kept breaking. And so my neighbor said, "This is like our Eleanor," and it just stuck ever and it since. Just stuck so it's, Eleanor. It's, well, it's nice that the car my has a name. Of Eleanor. So, you <laughs> know, so then I added the wheels, did the interior, had well, had it done, but yep. added the interior and then the wheels, tires, and then just last month we lowered it, put the disc brake kit conversion on it, lowered it, and then Wednesday night, Greg was hammering on the inner fender so it quit rubbing on the tire so we got it fixed and good to go what was the engine when you got it in 92 it was a three it's the same engine it, it was just, its original engine it was the original engine that just wore out and something let go and it knocked and hammered and yeah so then uh so what engine did you put in 
Yeah, I just rebuilt that one. It's, it's a three. Yeah, it's a 350. It was a 290 horse 350. Yeah. Two, 250 horse 350. Okay. And then now it's about a 350 horse 350. Nice. Three nice. And you said the interior is all done as well. There we go. Yeah, I got the full. Beautiful. We did the full custom interior on it. And it's nice, you were able to get the Buick interiors. Yeah, I went, when I went to the body shop to get it done, yeah. or the upholstery shop, they said, well, what do you want? And I said, I want this color tan. And they said, well, what do you want? And I said, well, I can tell you what I don't want. I don't want piping, I don't want pleats, and I don't want to see any plastic, and I don't want to see <laughs> the speakers. Yeah. And they said, that's it. I said, oh yeah, I want some cool armrests. So they did it. That was done 13 or 14 years ago. Actually. They did well, so they've covered the speakers there. And there as well. Yep. Beautiful. And they gave it the accent so you can see where the speakers are, and then they put the Buick stitching, the shield in the back of the yeah. seat. Yeah. Beautiful. Now you and your mates restore the cars together. We do a lot of work. You're here all together yeah. at the Good Guys event. Yeah. So how do you see? How much do you see each other every week? Oh, all the time. Nice. Yeah. We we I, I've known Greg through well my work for several years and started hanging out with him when we went to shows and then earlier this year he started finally well hey we're going out of town well yeah okay cool i'll go you know i'll, I'll go along too. i'll, I'll go along. Too, yep. and then i met steven i don't know about six years ago i met danny before that we were just hanging out at car shows and got to talking and nice. are you going saturday let's go let's go so we've become nice. really good friends and so we pretty much if we're going somewhere on a saturday night it's or Friday, whatever night it is, you go in or cars and coffee on Saturday yeah. morning, we get up and usually all go together. It's more fun if you go in a group. That's true. And you're all obviously in Des Moines, close proximity, which helps. Yeah, we live, we live, out, we live in Kansas City, so we left out what, Thursday morning at Oh, 8 sorry, you all live in Kansas yeah. City. Okay, so yeah. we drove up and we left at 8 o'clock Thursday yeah. morning and drove up, so then we'll stay here and we, you know, we stay at the same hotels, obviously, so we split rooms. So we can and we the can best, afford to do it. So. The best thing is, anything goes wrong with any of your cars. Oh, yeah. And we, we all can fix each other's. Yeah. And yeah, we can try to fix it or get something done to yeah. at least get it somewhere. So. That's amazing. Yeah, it's more fun to go in. You know, yeah. We've got a couple of people along. Well, that's great. I'm so happy I ran into you and your friends and your beautiful cars. And as I told them earlier, that this is such a nice strip with all of their cars lined up here. It just looks really nice. I'm going to show you one more time. And you guys got a good spot. What time did you come here this morning? We got here at, we left the hotel at 6.30. 6.30, yeah, pretty early. We parked in this spot about three years ago, kind of by luck. They had, there was a building right here, just a roof. And we drove by it a couple of times. And I was like, hey, we can get in there. So then we turned and pulled in and parked. And nobody parked there. Well, then people started after us. So then last year we got here and uh, we parked through the next year and then last year we pulled up and like, well let's go make sure we can get in and they had a bunch of construction equipment sitting here and there, there were trees here too they cut them down well, good so they knew then, you were coming so then this year when we got here we drove by and they were watering it yesterday and the lady from the restaurant goes no they're not going to water tomorrow you can park in there so oh, that's great when we pulled in the fairgrounds i was like well Plan A was try to get here on the street. Yep. Plan B, we had been by the convention center. And when I looked at that, it was so crowded. I was like, let's go here. And I pulled in. I'm like, well, I'm going to take a shot. And pulled in. And there was nobody here. So we just pulled in. And That's good so for you. We'll be back here tomorrow, too, probably. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Steve. Well, you're welcome. So where Steve. are you from? Me? I'm from Australia. That's what I thought. Yes, the accent. Yes. The accent gives it away.
So that can be covered in mud and it will still look good. I know. I love <laughs> nice the idea. I know, but I mean, look at it. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. What year is it? So I think it's a 20. Nice. 20 or 21. Nice. Is that out of the box? Or you've done stuff to it? We've done stuff to it. What have you done to it? Uh, I'm putting you they, on the stop on the oh, spot. <laughs> they changed uh, and put. Uh, they had a Frankenstein intake on it. They've done a bunch of motor works, but I okay. didn't do it. Okay. Um, I'm they the, upgraded I'm the motor. The, they upgraded the motor, uh, added the carbon fiber hood, and uh, the carbon fiber graphics to it, and then we changed the interior from the stock interior uh, and we went with uh, cat skin seat covers. Nice. But uh, they had a material that matches the outside of the car. Okay. So it's got different... Uh, I don't want to get it wet. That's it, alright. Yeah. It okay. yeah. Looks good. So we uh, did some changes to the inside. Now Just stock is it. what what engine is stock usually? Uh, would have been an LS3, like a 350. Like a 350, yeah. okay. They don't, they don't talk in those cubic <laughs> engines anymore. They talk in LS motor. And, and I haven't seen leaders. many of the modern cars. I mean, I, I film a lot of the classic shows, so I've been uh -huh. seeing a lot of the classic cars. But okay. This is a beautiful car. It's a, uh, it's a beautiful car. And it's it's running about a thousand horsepower, so. A thousand horsepower, yeah. did you say? Yeah, a thousand horsepower. A thousand horsepower. This uh, this reminds me almost of the um, the race cars that use nitro drag methane. Strip, drag strip car. So this is a drag strip car. It can be. It can be. Yeah, it's got it's set up that it can run on the on the street or it can run down the drag strip easy. Can it use nitro methane? Uh, it doesn't use nitro methane. It, it uh, I think they've got a set up for E85. Okay. That okay. was that was their deal to set it up for E85. Thousand horsepower. So what engine is that? What is that? A a five? A it's an LS7, I believe. LS7. But it has the uh, blower and it's got Exhaust. tons of modifications. I'm guessing Exhaust. it's turbocharged as well. It had a it had a, a twin turbo on it. It had a twin turbo. Yeah. And Pro I think stock? It still does. stock had no, twin turbo. We added no, you twin added that. Okay. We added the twin turbo. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So whose car is it? Uh, Carl Customs. Okay. So it belongs to Carl Customs. Um, it's just the company just, car. It's a company car. Okay. So that's our it's our show car. We take around. The, and how, what would you be if someone wanted to buy it with these? I have no clue. Okay. I think the Camaro was at fifty thousand when we bought yep. when we bought it. But with uh, all the modifications. Sure, now. with all the modifications and stuff. Uh, and eventually they will sell this. Yeah. Uh, but they'll they'll showcase it for a while. I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't blame them. Yeah. Look at the rims. Yeah, they're beautiful. It's, that's the second set of rims it's had. 